All right, hey guys, my name is Joe, and tonight I'm really excited because I'm gonna show you how to build your very own ultralight camera slider for pretty well under 50 bucks. And then in my next video, we're gonna take the same design and build on it by adding a motor and controller for only about $150 more. This is a two foot version, and it weighs one pound, six ounces. And I've tested it to support at least 50 pounds although I don't recommend putting that much on. Uh, I really like the 80-20 rail that you see here. That is the basis of this slider. It comes very handily in two foot increment lengths from two feet to eight feet. So before we get started, I have to say a few things about how some of these parts are created. I use a 3D printer. It's called the DaVinci One, and it's made by a company called XYZ Printing. It's a desktop model, it's about $500, and I've only had it for about four weeks now. Now I know some people are immediately going to complain and say, well that automatically takes it out of the realm of DIY. But you have to realize, that DIY inherently involves the use of tools, and as far as tools go, trust me when I say this is the future. I fully intend on making it pay for itself in terms of printing out camera parts. There are at least four other projects, um, aside from the slider, that uh, I'm basically ready to start prototyping on, and the plans for which I hope to share with you guys later uh, on this channel. So with all of that out of the way, let's get started by building our legs. I designed the legs to be small enough to print, yet large enough to accommodate plenty of weight. I went through many different prototypes trying to minimize size and maximize strength. So they ended up measuring about five and a half inches long. So before you go to print these, make sure that your printer can actually accommodate that part size. So after you've printed the legs, you're going to have some support material to remove. I usually just use a small uh, flathead screwdriver. Once you've exposed the recesses for the square nuts, you can mix up some epoxy and glue them in. I like to use a small plastic bag and cut the very tip of the corner off so that I can apply the epoxy relatively precisely. It's way easier than trying to do it with a toothpick. Just try not to get it into any of the uh, threaded area of the nut because if you do, you might have to essentially re-tap it out later. So while the epoxy is drying, we can move on to an optional but highly recommended step, which is plasti dipping the heads of the screws that will become our feet. Uh, it's not at all necessary, but it helps give the slider a finished look, and it definitely gives your fingers a little more to grip when adjusting the feet. These are 2 inch long socket cap screws, which I think is the best length for this. Don't worry if the plasti dip builds up into a ball, it will definitely even out as it dries. So I just set these in a little scrap block of wood that I've pre-drilled with quarter inch holes. Okay, now it's time to move on to the slider carriage. 8020 makes an aluminum carriage. Uh, but it costs about $40, and there's no obvious way to add a 3816 stud that you would need to mount a tripod head. So let's fire up the 3D printer and print one of our own. So once you've removed the support material from the carriage, you can glue in on the inside a 1024 square nut that will accommodate our thumb screw break. The top of the carriage has a nice little recess for a 3816 by 38 inch hex bolt. But we will have to grind down the head of the bolt so that it sits flush. You can do this with a file, but it might make you lose the will to live, so find a friend with a grinder if you don't have one yourself. It only takes a few minutes. The hex bolt doesn't have to be glued in, but you can if you want to. The linear bearing uh, underneath will actually hold it in place, and that's what we're going to put on next. So these are off-the-shelf 8020 bearings, 
and they are fastened to the carriage using number six by five sixteenths inch sheet metal screws. Make sure the screws sit flush with the top of the carriage um, so that they don't later interfere with your tripod head. You can use a 17 64ths drill bit by hand uh, just to open up the diameter of the hole if it's a little too small. Finally, uh, you can thread a 1024 by 1 inch long thumb screw through the side of the carriage and this will become your brake. So with the carriage fully assembled, go ahead and slide it onto your rail. Uh, you may find that it's a little loose, and if that's the case, you can shim it using the shim kits sold by 8020. Uh, I like to have enough friction so that the carriage doesn't slide under its own weight. You actually have to push it for it to go somewhere. So now we can go back and assemble our legs and feet. Thread the feet through the legs and attach the rubber caps onto the bottom of the feet. I got these uh, at widgetco.com. Now in order to attach the legs to the rail, you'll need a few of the 8020 T-nuts. Slide the T-nut into the end of the rail and fasten the leg to it by using a quarter twenty by three quarter inch screw. These T-nuts are also what you'll use if you want to attach any other quarter twenty hardware to your slider, like a quick release plate. So this is a good time to mention that the carriage will not move beyond the legs because the legs interfere with the carriage travel due to the way the legs bite onto the rail. Now this was a conscious design decision on my part to make sure the legs were as strong as possible. Um, so just make sure that you mount the legs at or very near the ends of the rail. At this point we're just about finished. So the only thing left to do is to add caps to the ends of the rail. Eighty twenty makes plastic end caps, but instead of using the grommets that come with them, I'm going to tap the hole in the middle of the rail using a quarter twenty tap. This will be much more secure and also offer additional mounting options in the future. Alright, so there you go. This is a very capable little slider. Ultra light, as light as anything out there. And it's about to get even more capable in our next video when we add a motor and controller for perfectly smooth and consistent live action shots. So, thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned.